still. Instead of the Lord, first, and ask healing, and ask him to heal. You hear me? God bless you in Jesus' name, sir. God bless you. Uh, I, out of the cameras, out of the oh, I have mixed feeling about this. All right, December 28, 2020. Uh, it's a Monday. Uh, just uh, three days after Christmas. And the temperature is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 10, 12 degrees Celsius. And I'm here in uh, slightly outside of downtown Flushing. It's a, uh, this is called the King's, this, uh, this is called the Kingsland Homestead. Homestead. And uh, there's a uh, landmark uh, guidance here, and it's called, it's right here, Kingsland Manor. And there's used to be a be weeping beech tree that's been gone. I think these are not the original. But, you know, you get the point, uh, that's what it is. This is how it's supposed to look like. Here's a plaque for the Weeping Beach. Yeah, the tree has a landmark status. Died in 1998. But, um, the, the Weeping Beach, uh, the descendants of the beach, uh, the weeping beech trees are found everywhere in uh, in the town, and it's uh, thought of as a descendant of that tree. So yep, the tree died, but I guess uh, it survived in some ways. And uh, Kingsland Homestead is uh, managed by Queen's Historical Society, and uh, there are some virtual events over here, because uh, in three languages. Signage, food. Um, I see two food here. How to make a piñata? Chinese language tour of flushing. Uh, maybe I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, one day we'll do it. <laughs> uh, all right. So now it's open today. Uh, just for this area, I think the exhibits are not open right now. We can even uh, just give it a shot. Oh, somebody's charging a Tesla here. Oh, very nice. I'm sure... Oh, it doesn't look very open. I mean, the door doesn't look too welcoming, so... <laughs> Someone Anyways. Yes, yeah, so it's drizzling a little bit, uh, but it does not affect me. I was here earlier this summer with the summer foliage, but now it's uh, all the leaves are off. Here, let's check out this stone. The huge and ancient tree has grown from cutting which Samuel Parsons brought from Belgium and planted here in 1847. Very interesting. The plot is here by place there in 1972. Yeah, so yeah, um, Samuel Parsons. Uh, has a lot of uh, names. Uh, I mean, you see this name everywhere in Flushing. Uh, the most notable uh, instance is uh, located uh, right to the north of where we stand. Uh, it's called Parsons Boulevard. Uh, there's a street named after him. He's uh, known as uh, one of the earliest uh, horticulturists in America. Uh, I did not bring an umbrella, so this may be problematic. 
I didn't know it would rain. <laughs> All right, uh, so we can uh, come this way. And be stuck with mud, okay. And just a little bit, um, a little area for people to relax. And uh, you know, there's also a park, a playground right next to it. But uh, I don't want to trip over that line now. Uh, let's take the other side. I think it says one mile to Flushing Bridge. Five miles, something, something, street ferry. Wow, so I don't know. I wonder what, the, what that means exactly. And then all these uh, old buildings also mixed in with this uh, one single new project right across. Look at that. Okay. So that's the playground. And, uh, and with a large area for ball games and exercise. I do have a clip of this group of uh, elderly uh, where we're uh, doing morning exercise right here in the area. Right up ahead is uh, Brown Street, spelled B O W N E. John Bone. So I think uh, he was a New York City mayor at some point. Very early people in uh, American history. This is uh, Margaret Common Green, which is this area we just passed. Uh, Flushing considered place of birthplace of hot culture in the new world. Yeah, very cool. This park is named after the Flushing historian, Margaret Carmen. I wonder how many people actually pay attention to these signs. Maybe it's just me. And so we, as residents here, just, uh, pass by these, uh, these signage and uh, landmark every day. But we don't know what it is. We just rush, rush to get out of work, rush to get the kids to school. This is the Bone House. John Bone in 1661. Earliest meeting place in Flushing of the Society of Friends. There's another place called Friends Meeting House. Uh, that's right down, right down this street called Lord and Boulevard. If we have a chance, we'll go there. But uh, a lot of these stuff are just closed, unfortunately, due to the pandemic. But a lot of... Uh, there's a mission fee. Uh, well, when one day it opens, it's cool. Yeah, so I just started want to start to make this channel about New York City exploration, and then this <laughs> this pandemic hits. Uh, it's such a great timing. But it is what it is. 
uh, we make the best use out of it. Um, it's all good. <laughs> um, okay. So here's another look at the fox stone. There's, a, there's actually a trail that's uh, suggested by this plot, right? And also the orange trail that's a little bit spread a little further out into the Lewis Latimer house and the Flushing High School. Yep, the Flushing High School itself is actually uh, significant. Flushing Town Hall and uh, RKO Keith Theater. I made a video out of it. <laughs> that one had a long story. And here's the fox, the fox stone, which is that, uh, which really is made in the memory of uh, the fox oaks. So here stood the fox oaks beneath whose branches George Fox, founder of Society of Friends, preached June 7, 1672. Yep, the George Fox stone. But uh, today, uh, let's go this way. Let's uh, have something else to be at. So today we're going this way. Thirty Seventh Avenue, Congressman Rosenthal Place. Never heard of him. It's a pretty new building. I remember going into that open house about two, three years ago. And uh, one of their two bedroom is being sold for 900,000 at the time. I'm pretty sure it's uh, mostly occupied at this point. So it's uh, one of those luxury quote unquote luxury candles in the area. You can make money without calling it luxury. Even though it's <laughs> it, it looks okay. Now coming this way, uh something to show you this guy. You see this um banner across the street? There's Krauss and Glassmith uh, lawyer. These guys are the injury, uh, personal injury lawyers, and uh, and why they're significant, and that's uh, because this guy, uh, in back in the late 1990s to early 2000s, he put a lot of ads. In, uh, in the Chinese TV stations. Uh, it's the, the TV station is called Sinovision. And th those people, and th this guy, went on to, went in front of the camera and speak in like a very, you know, a essentiated version of Chinese. So like, you know, a foreigner learning to speak the language and he says, uh, don't be afraid to find me, the lawyer, Krauss. So uh, I don't even remember because uh, his, his tone was so, like, I don't know how to say it. It's like so, nowadays we call it cringy because, you know, you're not doing it well and uh, like this is just like feeling weird. Uh, it's like, <laughs> and that's like, that's exactly like, that's almost how he said it. It was we we were we, I and my family sitting in front of the TV watching it. It was like oh weird. I was like <laughs> this guy, but it looks like uh, after twenty years, this lawyer is still around, doing good. <laughs> 
some small studios and uh, offices here. That's a uh, dental. I don't think they're open. Gangnam. Gangnam Dental. Remember that one? Remember Gangnam? The, uh, the guy who uh, did, the, the, did the dance two, about two years ago made, it, made, it, made himself world famous. But I heard that uh, <laughs> under the service, he's actually not a, not a uh, very decent person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the police Princeton. <laughs> Let's uh, get past that quickly. There's a business that cl closed around here. Let's find him. I, I was gonna show everyone this. Jeez, where, where, where was it? Okay, I think it's further up ahead. Uh, so there's this uh, ramen place called Toto. Uh, very authentic uh, Japanese uh, style ramen. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, they had a location in Hell's Kitchen. Then uh, one day they decided to uh, open up one in Flushing. Oh, relax! It's red light. It's red light across. Just relax. Oh. Come on. Where are you going? Where are you going, man? But you know, it's not like you're going anywhere. So what's the rush? <laughs> All right. Yep. This is here. Uh, this location, right above, on the sec on the second floor. Um, Toto Ramen. Oh, the sign is still there. If I get close enough, maybe you can see it. Yeah, the reflection is uh, stronger than the inside. Uh, unfortunately, they closed this location. Let's see if I can actually get a better look. It's right here. Oh, they 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 waste no time in taking things out. Uh, Toto stands for bird person, and that's why you see this uh, chicken in a bowl a motif on the top. Or an open bar design. I'm sure if you uh, if you call the real estate agent, they will tell you that oh, okay, you can rent this place for such and such price, and all this equipment is going to cost you seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the like I said in an earlier video, man. The real estate agents in New York, more uh, more specifically, the landlords in New York will sell you the, the previous guys are uh, failed businesses uh, no sympathy the, that's part of uh, New York New York City um, excuse me I'm coming through I don't know if other big cities uh, whose uh, landlords also do that kind of thing. But I know for sure that uh, in some of the suburbs uh, they don't. <laughs> so something to think about and something to keep in mind. It's, there's gotta be a little bit far, my destination. 
but I have a good feeling about going to the botanical garden. So I think that's where I'm gonna go. Downtown Flushing on a Monday morning. To be honest, I think this building is actually kind of ugly. That that uh, that thing with the white sidings. Yeah, that's just me. Oh, these guys are still open. Cool. This is uh, probably one of the best, uh, one of the cheapest eats in in downtown Flushing. It's called uh, Bian Dan Wu. They do uh, what they call a four four dishes and one soup. So basically, they'll take a bowl of rice and slap on uh, four items from the buffet that you can choose from. And they also give you a very, uh, very simple broth. And that's about five to six dollars last time I visited. So uh, nowadays, uh, with all the things rising up in prices, I think uh, might go up a little bit, probably six fifty something. But they are always the cheapest eats in town. It's like uh, if you don't know what to eat and if you don't mind the the kind of slap together feeling, those were the guys. Oh. A Sprint mobile store turned into T-Mobile now. And uh, with another T-Mobile location right across the street, uh, you will soon uh, notice. So Steam Rice Rose has gotten very popular and this is a new place that just pops up, also selling dim sum. Okay. I can come back here one day. The face shop, uh, cosmetics and uh, gone. Sonic, uh, never popular here. Uh, they also done. Uh, that felt a little depressing, doesn't it? Still. Instead of the Lord, first, and ask healing, and ask Him to heal. You hear me? God bless you in Jesus' name, sir. God bless you. Uh, I, demons out of the campus, out of the I have mixed feeling about this. You saw just what <laughs> you just saw what happened, right? <laughs> Some dude was homeless and, he's, and he gets helped by a few uh, readings of our Bible. I don't know what that means, but yeah, I don't believe, so I'm sorry. Let's say a discount store, Jambo. flower shop uh, they have the Chinese New Year's uh, items out already all right this is the original Joe steam roll um, you should try these guys they're, they're definitely like the first first original um, steam roll that has landed in uh, New York City for flushing and even uh, Anthony Bourdain came here to uh, to have a meal. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Anthony. Yeah, that guy is pretty cool. Uh, oh, this place uh, this little mall here is starting a little lively, which is nice. Uh, various food stalls. In the basement is a uh, art studio and some training center. 
Ooh, this place got a lot more food stalls these days. I'm surprised. Because uh, in the beginning, uh, this this mall is actually not designed for food that much. It's uh, usually for dry use, like retailing. And this is a, one of the rare occurrence of computer repair stores. Oh, mechanical keyboard, look at that. Lovely. Yep, uh, if you check my channel name, uh, Tech Explorers, uh, I used to believe that I can run some tech contents on my channel as well but uh, that proved to be too daunting so uh, now I just uh, stopped doing that but hey if you have any tech related questions or want to discuss something uh, I have my discord channel open to support that so so I probably I'm, uh, so even though I don't make videos about that anymore uh, you're more than welcome to drop by and just Tell us. Alright, that's the J Mart. The New World Mall. Used to be a um, department store called Caldor's. And uh, since Caldor is gone, uh, they've been, this building has sat there for almost a decade before the, these guys finally taken over and reopened one. So here's the original T Mobile store. Um, Competing with another T-Mobile store right across the street on this side And here we are At the Main Street intersection with uh, Roosevelt Avenue Thousands of people pass by this intersection to get to work Thanks to the Main Street subway station Right here, uh, 7 train uh, The Motel Sports Good is gone Because they, they haven't done well since even before the pandemic So now it's just a final nail in the coffin of street hawkers street vendors are everywhere these days and uh, there's a New York Post article about these street vendors becoming problematic and I'm sure for some of these uh, rent paying uh, rent paying the business owners uh, some of these people skipping out on paying rent, uh, therefore having a cost advantage over them. Uh, they're definitely are feeling a little upset. And, uh, and Peter Ku, uh, the uh, local assemblyman, I think that's his uh, title nowadays. He made his uh, opinions known in the paper. You know, uh, and uh, sometimes, you know, these street vendors may not leave enough space for people to walk so remember keep in mind that this um, main street the main street uh, sidewalks many of the places are expanded from the about uh, six to seven feet from before and that happened about three to three years ago so they <laughs> they exit the city the city expanded the sidewalk then uh, these street vendors took over so that people are feeling a little bit unfair oh look what happened look at that how can I follow your guidance to walk across the street
Hmm. All right, maybe somebody should uh, call DV11 and order a repair. Still functioning though. Difficult times. That's a Christmas tree and the American flag. The Queen's Library Flushing Branch. The Sion Famous Food. Uh, they have uh, some outdoor space in the back, so you can check them out. Oh, that's another sign. Okay, this sign talks about the flushing river. Do not go there because uh, it's, uh, it really stinks. The name Flissing, Flissingen by the original settler after a Dutch town located near a similar waterway. And uh, translated into English means flowing water. Uh, a lot of people say it's uh, um, flushing is the toilet of Queens, of New York City. I'll take that. <laughs> it's funny enough. <laughs> Alright, uh, lots of street vendors these days. And uh, the city has a, uh, I believe the city has a directive on, uh, oh, this is cool. Uh, the city has a directive to the police not to do enforcements on these on these uh, street vendors so I think they are getting a little bolder than before And nowadays, it's not just uh, PPE anymore, like the beginning of the pandemic. Now it's just everything. Jewelries. But I guess uh, if you do buy from them, uh, don't forget to haggle, because they're not paying rent. <laughs> they're not paying rent, so you, you, you feel free to haggle them. And uh, don't... Don't, uh, don't have the false belief that these things uh, could be worth much more than uh, their stated value because, you know, we have a saying that you, in Chinese, that the, there's only people who buy the wrong things, but never people who sell the wrong thing. Uh, what it means is that the seller always have more information about an item or a transaction than the buyer. Uh, a uh, important understanding that there's uh, asymmetrical information when you do, do a deal. So I would not believe that any anything of high value will be sold right on the street. So be careful of that. Alright, now 70% uh, alcohol. That's interesting. It's, um, the guys, this, that store that we just passed has a bunch of uh, ceramic baths right next to um, a tower of food. Like I said, you know, if you buy from them, you gotta be very careful. 
That was some serious construction. And those are very old cables. Like the, back in the days we had these composite video cables. Uh, don't think it's gonna worth much now. More full fenders. restaurant um, I don't know if they're open now I don't think they're open well, in. Uh, it just says right there close two weeks I don't think uh, it's going to be two weeks So I will consider this the last block of downtown Flushing. So going this way is downtown. Going this way is kind of separated by uh, all these residential buildings. Uh, these apartment buildings are about six stories high. And as you keep going further down, there's a, um, it's also split by the Casino Park, the Queen's Botanical Garden, and then the New York Presbyterian Hospital. And then you go for, going further down, then you have uh, another residential block, and then some small amount of uh, businesses, a small business district. Then you go down to uh, Kew Gardens, Q Gardens. Ah, oh, forgot. I think I think it's called Q Gardens something, and there's a predominantly uh, Jewish area. But uh, today we're not going that far. All right, that. Uh, I think I will let him pass. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Go, go behind him. The halal restaurant are close across the street. Yeah, there's um, there's a good size of a Muslim population in China, in uh, in the north, northeast or northwest side of China. So there are some. Uh, there are some demand for this type of food, even in uh, 
even in flushing Chinatown. That's another nice looking building in construction. Uh, the gentrification will not stop. <laughs> now, uh, this is called uh, the uh, upper head uh, right here is a Hong Kong restaurant. It's a uh, pretty authentic style. Um, so check these guys out. Uh, if you have, have a chance. Outdoor dining in fully covered. Look at the Christmas Eve reef on the third floor, fourth floor. I would say people don't come this far from uh, downtown to shop so a lot of these businesses uh, don't get a lot of uh, traffic this guy right here uh, under the red sign is already gone it's uh, for rent now let's close but i'm sure these um, discount stores are doing doing okay A Q44 bus just passed us. A Q44 goes all the way up to the Bronx. December at the Garden. Some tours, workshops from the 5th and the 6th. Well, we're way past that. Oh, Art in the Garden, December 27th. Included with Garden Emission. Uh, wait, I thought we were open today. Um, that sucks, it's not open. Or maybe you have another entrance for some special. Oh, 27, no. Today is the 28th, so no. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Let's see. So I'm just one day past. So it looks like today is uh, actually not open, so that's uh, too bad. <laughs> uh, so here's the entrance with a metal tree sculpture. And we're just gonna stare into the distance, acting like we uh, want to clip in. Oh, sorry. Can't go. The Queen's Botanical Garden is actually a part of uh, Flushing Meadows Corona Park. And we are right here. So if we go further down, you pass uh, Clutch Point Boulevard, and then you can go, f go down Fowler Avenue and into into the fountain of planets and go further up to the unisphere then uh, on the other side is actually a corona the neighborhood of corona or you can come this way to the shoreline of the flushing bay or you can go this way to meadow lake and the willow lake uh, but today uh, i'm not gonna do any of these <laughs> all right uh let's go back so, uh, it's a little dis disappointing, but what can you do?
it'll be cool. I mean, um, if they are open, uh, the winter admission uh, is free. I had a video of this place back in the summer. So, all right.